Hey, check one. Two. Oh, I gotta get the mic going. Hold on. Up here, up a notch. I'm gonna go. Uh, let's see. I'm gonna go. Figure eight. Oh, uh, dang. I did. I did some work yesterday with my mic in figure eight. <laughs> All right. Let's see. Uh, I'm gonna wait. Super coach, I'm gonna wait for a few people to get on here. Um, I may even do a little post on my Facebook real quick, just to let everybody know. All right. Um, all right, we got three. I'm gonna wait just a second. Okay, uh, but let me um, copy and paste and let people know that I'm okay. And just just if you haven't been playing along, we're doing a drinking game. Every time I touch my face, you have to take a drink, preferably of some warm tea. Um, do, 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 do. Okay, I'm just going to post this on Facebook now to let everybody know. I'm live now. I know I'm going to get all these jokes. You're alive? No, I'm live now. So everybody go on my Facebook page and say, you're alive? Okay. Um, Ice Pepper. Hey, I'm seeing some regulars. <laughs> so that's my hair. Like, we just went for a long walk. So we got 7,000 steps in uh, out of trying to do 10,000, but we're really kind of hitting close to 12, 13. It's crazy because you're walking on the sidewalk, and if you see someone coming, we walk out into the street so they can they can keep walking on the sidewalk. Um, what I we're gonna we still have another lesson on uh, the. Um, I had some questions um, about the uh, knowing the major and the minor thing, so I'm gonna I'll talk about that a little bit as far as pentatonic shapes go, um, and the uh, um, the C form and all that stuff. Just as a rule, just so you know, if you're in the key of C major, okay, you're in the key of C. If you say key of C, you're in the key of C major. That's a given. Um, thanks, Gary. Um, the, uh, so if you want to know what the relative minor to that is, you go down to scale degrees. So, for example, in the key of C, you go backwards to C to B to A. And A is the relative minor to C major. So if you're trying to figure out, well, how do I play in A minor? Well, just play in C major and you're fine. So let's say you're, the song's in F sharp minor. Well, what key is that? Well, you can do the opposite. You go up a whole step and a half step, and that's how you get to the major key. So if you're in F sharp minor, you go up a whole step, and that would be G sharp, and then up a half step, okay? So maybe what I'll do is, hey, we can have a, we can have a game and see who can type it the fastest, uh, what the relative majors and minors are, okay? Mm -hmm. And then... Um, we're gonna we're gonna talk about the final uh, shape, which is the D shape um, of the caged. We're we're still gonna do more cage stuff. Don't worry. In the future, I, I also feel like that's a uh, just something for me to start on every day, and kind of gives me a, an opportunity to um, kind of have an idea of someplace. And you know me, I'm Mr. T tangential. I'm, I'll be off in tangents. What is it? Is it? Is it Gary? You're the one that says squirrel. <laughs> it's totally me. And I, you know, I'm also trying to watch. The comments here this just helps me cope because I like teaching and I like being with you and you guys are helping me more than I'm helping you just so you know that so yes yeah, okay so let's see um so okay so if you're in the key of G you go down a half step and a whole step and there's your relative minor so E minor is the relative minor to the key of G so if you're playing G major pentatonics that will also work in E minor and every one of these pentatonic shapes that I've got written down I'm going to show you in a second because I got the I got the next one coming up um, every one of those shapes uh, can be used as the major and minor the thing I was talking about may, uh, was uh, yesterday in, in the day before was the cool thing you can do is if you're playing in say C major, you know, you've got, uh, let's say, e, uh, no, C major is a good one. Uh, like you're in C major blues, three frets, it automatically becomes C minor pentatonic and both will work over that C blues situation. And what I like to do is the, the, we did that shape, uh, the C major pentatonic, the other one that was right above it, 
we learned yesterday, which was based on the E form, uh, but we did it in D. Um, that one, um, you can you can play the C major and you can play the C minor. I got a buzz. But you can, George Benson would be. He would combine them both at the same time. I mean, you could even hear it when it goes from the major to the minor. Right? You can hear the kind of go from major to minor. And Benson, he was one of my favorite guitar players. He was uh, uh, one that would do that. Okay. So um, here's what we're going to do. Now, keep in mind, I, 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 I know that I've got all levels represented here uh, watching. I've got 26 people watching. I probably got pretty, you know, beginners to intermediate to, to pros even. Um, and uh, so I, uh, I will, well, you can just listen. I, I gave the example, I think on the first lesson that when I was a kid and I first subscribed to Guitar Player Magazine, I literally didn't understand 90% of what I was reading. You know, I was 13 years old. I'm getting Guitar Player every month. And I didn't understand it, but I read it cover to cover, okay? And uh, the next month I understood, you know, maybe 12% or 13%. And the next month I understood 14%. And the next month, and by the end of the year, I was understanding about half of what I was reading. It was like, oh, okay. Or especially when it came to technical stuff and gear and like, what's a distortion pedal and what's a fuzz button? All that stuff started to make sense the more I, I read. So that's kind of what I'm hoping here is that, oh, sorry, let me turn on this light. <laughs> Is that better? Oh, now you can see I'm wearing pants. <laughs> I was going to play the game. Oh, we have a drinking game. So if I touch my face, uh, you have to take a drink. And hopefully it's just tea or something. I'm not encouraging alcoholism <laughs> in, a, in a quarantine. Uh, yeah, the dog's barking. Yeah, he's out there barking. It's yelping, too. It's the one where I look over the fence and he's yelping at the door like, let me in, let me in. It's not the barking at a squirrel kind of bark. Um, but I'm not hearing it right now, but hopefully he's in. If, if it's totally quiet, I might turn off the, the live cast and just go to go to work because I got work to do. But uh, anyway, so, so my thinking is that by watching, like if you watched all five of the videos about the pentatonic shape, um, the pentatonic shapes, then you're starting, you're probably starting to understand some of the linguistics or some of the jargon that I'm using. Um, I don't mean to speak to speak with jargonese and I apologize you just when you've been playing guitar you've been doing you've been doing this as a living since I was 15 I'm 58 so that's what 43 years um it's almost hard and you know all of my all of my connections all of my friends all of the people I work with they're all musicians too so you kind of just start talking in this language and you don't realize that you people can't you know my wife just is like blah 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 to her you know especially when Alex and I talk talk about gear um however um and it's funny because when when Alex was a little boy, whenever he'd meet any adult, he'd say, "So, what instrument do you play?" Because because he, he just assumed all everyone that we met would uh, um, was playing an instrument. So, okay, so here's what I want to do. You got your guitar in your hand, I hope. If not, pick one up if you can. Um, electric is fine. Acoustic doesn't matter. And we're gonna remember yesterday. I showed you that warm uh, the the pinky exercise to help you give more independence to your pinky and more strength to it. We're going to do that in a second. I'm going to give you the easier one first in case there's some real beginners here. I don't want to discourage anyone. So the pattern we're going to do, and if you're playing a, a nylon guitar, you can practice your alternating picking. And yesterday I talked about all sorts of different variations on your right hand. I saw a question about the thumb. I'm not working on the thumb right now. Um, but you can develop more independence with your right hand finger. So if you want to go index, middle, index, middle, index, middle, or if you want to go middle index, middle index, or you can go index ring, index ring, index ring. You can do that. If you want to go middle ring, middle ring, you know, you, you know, you can do that. And that will be huge. That will really help you get strong and independent here on the right hand. Um, okay. So the pattern we're going to do, I'm going to type it in right now. Just one, two, three, four, four, three, two, one. We're going to start the first fret on the first string like this and then hit the top note twice. And go up a fret.
Now move up to the third fret. Try to keep all your fingers over the fretboard. I feel like I'm giving a tennis lesson. Fifth, fourth fret. Up fifth fret. Okay, seventh fret. We we'll stop here. Two, two of those. Okay, does that make sense? Hopefully that makes sense. All right, um, and we you can do the same thing on the bottom on the second string. Um, you, you can do that all the way up, and if you want, you can go all the way down every day, and you can go faster if you can, just to just to do it. And like I said, you can work all sorts of variations on the right hand. Um, one one that's really hard, index middle ring middle like this yeah. that's hard i'm not even doing it right but and you also go all the way down to the bottom string okay and so that helps you with reaching higher up get your thumb down here see my hands further down like this I mean, you'll see me get lazy and play, have my thumb up here. If something's really easy, I'm very likely going to have my thumb up there. But as soon as something gets difficult, I always give the example of every breath you take. It's like, I mean, that's just really hard reach. And so my thumb has got to be back there. It's just, there's no way to, uh, I always use the example of like, when your hand's open, you can spread your fingers. But as soon as you draw your hand in, they all want, all four fingers want to go to the center of your palm. So if the palm of your hand is, in, uh, you know, if the guitar neck is in the palm of your hand, you, you're, you're not going to be able to spread your fingers out. So you got to get the palm of your hand away from the, uh, the back of the neck so that you can, you can get some of that spread. So if you're really struggling with reaching things, it may be because of where you are, how you're grabbing the neck. Okay. All right. So let's go to the other one, the harder, the more difficult um, warm up exercise. And this one really works the pinky. So it's one, four, Three, four, two, four, three, four. So you can see that every one of the, every other note is the fourth finger. And what this is great about, not just building strength, but what it does is it builds in the, the pinky gets the sense that it's needed. So it's going to stay available. I used to struggle with tucking my pinky back when I wasn't using it. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> Susanna. Uh, so I was struggling with, you know, tucking my pinky back. And this exercise that my college professor, uh, classical guitar professor uh, back at Butler gave me, cured it almost 100%. I wish there was a cure for coronavirus, 100%, right? Hey, maybe this does it. I don't know. We should see. Okay, so what it is, is one, do it with me very slowly. I'll go slow and then we'll pick it up. One, four, three, four, two. Okay, and then go up a fret, second fret. One, I'm referencing the number, numbers I'm using are for your fingers, not for the frets. One, four, three, four, two, four, three, four. In Spanish, oh, I think I know Japanese too. Uno, cuatro, tres, cuatro, dos, cuatro. I'm so bad. I'm so bad. Let's see. Itch ni san shi go. Itch ni itch shi. Oh, I can't do it. Anyway, that's Japanese. Hey, Harrison. Okay, now fifth fret. One, four, three, four, two, four, three, four. Okay. This is, like I said, a great exercise for giving your pinky keeping your pinky in the game. Because if you're not using your pinky when you're playing, especially in soloing electric guitar, you're losing 25% of your potential of your hand. So you really, I mean, there's some great guitar players that hardly ever use a pinky. And here's what's crazy. I was just watching uh, Rick Beato, who's one of the best. You guys, I'm sure you know him. Many of you know him. Um, and he was interviewing a long, really great interview with uh, Eric Johnson. And I was shocked at how much Eric Johnson was actually tucking his pinky back. <laughs> he kept... I mean, his pinky was flying back and forth, so it has nothing. And he's like, well, he's a shredder. He can play anything, and he's amazing. Okay, so yeah, he can do just about anything, and, and yet he still tucks his pinky back. So it's it's not this, 
just because you're not tucking your pinky back doesn't mean you're going to be an amazing guitar player. But okay, and on the bottom, you know, you're going to want to work down all the strings. You could do something where you go all the way up the sec uh, first string and all the way up the third string and all the way up the fifth string, and then the next day you go all the way up the second string, the fourth string, and the sixth string. So you can kind of spread it around. But the idea is to kind of make sure you're playing all the frets, get get used to the different size of frets, get used to reaching over the fretboard instead of just playing on the first string. And so that's all that. Okay, now on to the um, I'm hooked up, but I got, I think, think, let me see, I get a sound going here. Hold on. What is this? Oh, okay. So, um, no, here, I'll do this one. Okay. So. Let's hit the, we're going to hit the, um, hey, Kathy, we're going to hit the, uh, oh, Ecuador. Oh, hey, Pablo, tell, yeah, Pablo told me you were going to be watching. <laughs> so hello to Ecuador. Um, so the, uh, hola, Ecuador. I'm assuming you're in Quito. Uh, so remember, okay, so the caged method that I've been talking about, and you can go back and watch all these videos, Okay. Um, cause I'm numbering them, but I might change the, it may say daily video, March 24th or something like that. I may change it to dates instead of numbers. I don't know. I'm not sure which is easier for you guys to find where we were. You know what I'm saying? If you want to go back, um, and, uh, oh, Spain. Hola. I love Barcelona. Such a beautiful city. Okay. So the cage method is, is based on five basic chords that all beginners learn. Okay, C, A, G, E, and D. And that is the, the word cage is the exact order. And if you start on A, then it's A, G, E, D, C. If you start on G, it's G, E, D, uh, C, A, and so on forth. But that's how all the shapes appear on your fretboard. They go up in that order. So the C shape, if I were to make a C chord above that, it would be the A shape. If I were to make another C chord above it, it'd be the G shape. We're spelling the word caged here, okay? The next one is going to be an E shape. Sure enough, there it is right there at the uh, eighth fret. And the next one that we just now talking about is a D shape. Now, this is a C chord, but it looks kind of like a D chord, right? If I slide all the way down here. Now, um, we've been doing everything in the key of D. Now, we're, we we did the C, the C shape in the key of D, so we were at the second fret. We did the A shape. See, this is the A. It looks like an A chord, okay? This is the, uh, we did the G shape in the key of D. We did the E shape in the key of D here at the 12th fret. And we're going to do the D shape at the 12th fret. I'm sorry, yes, 10th fret for this one. 12th fret here. We're going to do this one at 12th fret. Um, the, um, uh, I could do it down here, but I can't because I can't do the pentatonic scale down here. So we're going to go ahead and go up to the 12th fret. So if you're playing acoustic guitar, I apologize. You can visualize with me. You can still practice the scale of shape, but as I'm playing, it won't sound the same if you're further down the neck. Okay, does that make sense? So, um, so we're going to learn a, a scale that's up here, and I'm going to show it to you in a second. I've got all five of them written down on a piece of paper, so get ready to do a screenshot because we've been doing that. Everybody's going to screenshot, and if it's reversed, I think it's not reversed. I think it's just reversed for me. So if it's not reversed for you, then you just screenshot it. If you have to reverse it, you can just reverse that in your image viewer. Um, but remember I told you my favorite, the everyone's favorite pentatonic scale is number what I call the number one one. Look at me tucking my pinky away. See, there it is. There it goes. It goes away. So that's my favorite, you know, that's everybody's favorite pentatonic scale, that, that shape right there. And one of the things great about that one is that it has three Ds in it, which are the major roots, and it has three Bs in it, which are the minor roots, okay? And, um, oh, you found all the screenshots. Great. Well, we're going to do another one now, and it's just a second. Okay. So all the shapes we've learned so far have all been within four frets, Okay. So we've had not had to actually move our hand around uh, to, to play it. This one, unfortunately, is the only one, not only that you have to move around, but it's also the only one of the five pentatonic shapes that only has two major roots and two minor roots. 
And the minor root is kind of how we what we use to find the blues version of the pentatonic scale. Don't worry about this, file that away. You'll hear that term more and more as we go. Um, so this one is not a great one. It's a, it's I use it more to get as as knowing it's there is good because you're going to go to the pentatonic shape below and the pentatonic shape above. Okay, so here it is. It's it's the D form one. It's the one right here. Okay, everybody do their screenshot. <laughs> I'll smile right next to it. Yeah. Okay, now I'm going to hide my face so you can do another screenshot where you don't have to look at my mug. Okay, and you can crop my face out happily. I'm fine with that. In fact, I recommend it. Um, okay, so um, you'll notice that that one says 11th fret, but there's only one note that's at the 11th fret. So how do we play this? <sighs> Generally, what I do, if I'm going to be in this shape, I'm going to go ahead and play the first three strings with my first and second or first and third finger. I'm not going to be strict about using my second third because I'm using my first because technically, like I said, we're, if your first finger is at the 11th fret, you're in what's called 11th position. If your first finger is lined up at the third fret, you're in third position, sixth fret, sixth position. That's a classical guitar phrase uh, terminology. And um, so I, I like to use that because it really does give you an indication where you are. This is a scale that doesn't really meet that. I would say technically we're probably more at 12th position, but we have to go down a fret for one, um, one note. Now, when we go and uh, start turning all these into diatonic scales, okay, so pentatonic scales, penta means five, right? A pentagon, uh, penta means five. These are five note scales. When we make these diatonic scales, we're gonna add two more notes. When we add two notes to these five scales, you're gonna find that you're gonna have to move around for several of them, okay? So you will have to actually, where, where you may have a, a scale that you could have just stayed in one position, you won't be able to do that for all of the diatonic versions of these same scales. And we're gonna do those next, I think. That's my, next, that's my plan, okay? So let's go ahead and play this together. We're gonna be, um, uh, okay, uh, so oh, the, the D form, I mean, you could you could kind of go. You could think of it as being. Oh, let's see. Hold on. Let me do this. Uh, sorry. D. <laughs> uh, Twelve. Fourteen. Fifteen. Fourteen. Okay, but that only this only has four notes. If you really think about like D, how sometimes you play it like this with your thumb over and get that F sharp. If you think about it that way, we can we can have a a oops. Let's see. Four. Twelve. Sorry. A six note. I'm trying to talk and type at the same time with one hand. A six note chord there. And that six note chord, if you just visualize, you don't have to play it. Crazy thing about these pentatonics is the bottom of this one is the same as the top of that one. The bottom of this one is the same as the top of that one. The bottom of this one is the same as the top of that one. The bottom of this one is the same. So if you remember this one, you already know half of these notes. Okay. And so what... So there's a lot of shared information, a shared knowledge between these scales. And that this way you can see how they chain link together. They're all connected. And you can even see the box shapes that we talked about, like that George Harrison uses uh, on the solo to Let It Be. Um, and Harrison is named for George Harrison, I believe. Isn't that right, Harrison? Where are you? I saw you up there earlier. Hopefully, are you still watching? Uh, somewhere. But... Um, Basically, um, he used box shapes and you can start to see these. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do another diagram. Um, I should have done it today. I'll do it tomorrow beforehand. I don't, wanna, I don't want you sitting there watching me do a diagram. Um, I'll do another diagram where I put, put them all on one fretboard. So you can see all five of them connected. In the, and we'll, do, we'll stick with the key of D just for continuities. But again, the great thing about this, here's five scales, right? No, nope. This is 60 scales. These are all completely movable. And remember, I put a circle around the lowest major root note. So if you line that up with the key you wanna be in, then that scale will be in that key. That pentatonic scale will be in that key. So if this is lined up with D and it is, then that's a D major pentatonic. If this is lined up to D, then this is a D major pentatonic. Okay, I'm gonna hold this up again one more time so you guys can take a picture. Maybe my, I hope my fingers weren't in the way before. Okay, without my face. All right. A lot of great players don't use a pick, so don't worry about that, Jim. Um, 
you're playing electric guitar. There's still guitar players that, do, you know, George Bent, I mean, Wes Montgomery used to some and was in. One thing you can do if, you're, if your problem is you keep dropping them, uh, I would have students just carry them around with them all day to school, lunch, <laughs> classroom. I can, you know, I, I don't even realize I have my pick in my hand half the time. So, um, and you like guys that tap, you know, they, they put their pick away. So uh, they, they still have it in their hand generally. Um, so yeah, that's just a, you know, if it's, if that's the issue, if it's a matter of being comfortable with it, yeah, it's already, here we go. We're going to, I'm going to give you fret numbers. Uh, and then I'll do it again with finger numbers. We're going to go up and then we're going to come back down. Go USC. Hey, Emily. Okay. So 12, 14, 12, 14, 12, 14, 11. See, we have to move down. 14, back to 12, 15, 12, and 14. Okay, now when you do this, also try to visualize that little D shape right there. You can just do these like that. Even if you just see these three, it'll get you at least three of the 12 already halfway there. So, or, you know, a quarter of the way there. Okay, backwards, we're gonna go, and I'm gonna give you again frets right now, and then we'll do fingers. 14, 12. 15, 12, 14, 11, 14, 12, 14, 12, 14, 12. And if you don't have an electric guitar, you know, always keep in mind, you can always pick up one, you know, me and cheap electrics. Um, you can always get one for under a hundred bucks just to have. Um, and that way you can practice playing up on these smaller frets if you really want to work on soloing in particular. Okay. All right. So now let's talk about fingers. I'm going to go one at the 11 and then let's use the pinky. Although the frets are getting so small up here, you might be tempted to use the third finger and that's fine because then it just feels like you're reaching down and grabbing that one note and then you're back into position. Okay. So you could totally use your third finger on that note. Uh, uh, first finger and then pinky. This might be the only time we use the pinky on this scale. On top string one and three. He's not named for George Harrison. Oh, I thought <laughs> I thought he was. Okay, we'll pretend he is. Okay, so three, one, four, one, three. Reach down one. Right there, and here's another one. And I'll tell you, a lot of times when I'm playing, if I'm in D, I might sit on this note, but it's hard to wiggle a first string because you oftentimes will go, you can only go up, you can't come down very much, or else you slide off the edge of the fretboard. So, so a lot of times we'll do that kind of thing if I'm playing in blues. Um, with on, on, in this pentatonic shape, so I'm visualizing. I'm visualizing this this chord, the D chord. So in the cage method, that's what I'm in, you know envisioning. Um, major right but if i take the scale that we learned last yesterday and move it up three frets now we get a, a, a d minor pentatonic over the d major and you get this right so now i'm playing this the shape we learned yesterday over, but then i can go back and forth back and forth between the new one, the, the D form, and then the E form slid up, okay? 
All right, so let me, um, so I'm going to pretend from now on that Harrison was named for George Harrison. I don't know why I thought that. That's just crazy. Anyway, I'm crazy. All right, everybody having fun? Are we having fun? Uh, let's see, question. On your root note on the E form, how is the E note on the 10th fret first string, or is it off a few frets? Yes, the it's the, that's a, that's uh sorry. Yep, the E form, that is the root note right there. This is the ninth fret, but we're up one more fret. So 10th fret, the E form is, because we're playing, these are all D. These are all in the key of D. I should write that down. Key, and I just got a bunch of ink on my finger. Hey, how many times have I touched my face? Anybody keeping track? I have not been paying attention. And I'm going to play maybe a, a game, you know, where we can guess by the end of the day if I'm wearing pants. So I'm going to have to do this. And then you, <laughs> like the newscaster, can get away with not wearing pants. So. Okay, yeah. So all of those are in D. Okay, now I'm gonna, I, I got to touch my face because now that I said something, I'm getting psychosomatically. I'm, it's like I've been coughing, like, <clears throat> oh, no, I've got the virus. Um. So, all right, now, oh, sorry, uh, but I will post this. If it's buffering a little bit now, it should be fine when I, when I post it. You can re-watch it or any section of it, okay? All right, so that's, so we've got all five of the major pentatonic shapes over the, um, over the caged chords, okay? And uh, again, um, I'm going to, I'm going to continue on this. I could do every key, but that would just be a lot of redundancy. And I want, I mean, and they've announced that like Netflix and uh, I think, I think YouTube said the same thing. So um, I apologize, but um, that's just so that we can all be doing this, I think. Um, so what I want to do is now I'm going to, we're going to start doing the uh, diatonic scales. So we're going to learn two more notes. And, you know, that's, that's basically the pentatonic scale over the C shape, okay? So that's what I'm talking about. Whereas before, we just did pentatonic. So basically, two notes per string. And in fact, all of these are two notes per string. Uh, that's the beauty of pentatonics is you can kind of just do two notes per string. Pentatonics on, on like, uh, well, you know, not impossible on violin. Um, in open position, they're not bad, but violinists generally don't play a lot of open strings. They like to, to fret everything for continuity. Um, but uh, on mandolin, they're not, the basic ones are not too hard, but on a, a guitar, they can be actually pretty simple. So, um, all right, uh, let's see, how far are you gonna take this course, please? Uh, heck, I don't know, I'm just gonna keep going until uh, we're unquarantined. And I know that in California that we're going to April 19th, so we got a long way to go. So I'll just keep talking about this. Um, and, uh, I'll sidetrack too, as, uh, <laughs> as I'm prone to do, uh, let's see, what other questions do we have here? Uh, I see, I, I did the guitar pick thing. Everybody's doing well. Uh, turn on your notifications too, for this so that you can get a notification. Although I hate to do that because I don't want you to get bugged by it. I'm sure I had a lot of people uh, turn off notifications because they're getting one every day from me. Hey, Tom in Hawaii, are you still there? Uh, let's see. Oh, yeah, oh, Ecuador, okay, question of the root note. Yeah, I got that. Let's see, uh, can you give me a piece of advice? I'm a beginner self-taught player. What is the most important skill a beginner guitarist must master by your opinion? No, your English is amazing. And uh, are you in Russia? That looks Russian. Uh, okay, and I've said this before. I even have, I think I've got videos on this. Um, I have said uh, for the electric guitar player, the most important skill to have is to learn your fretboard, to learn all the notes on your fretboard. Just learn it. It's just, it's like learning your multiplication tables. You just do it. And once you do it, you have it. For acoustic guitar players, and here's what, what when I, the reason I say these, this is the most important thing is because it's usually, it's the, it's, I'm, I'm basing that on, it's the most common weakness that I see among guitar players. Like electric guitar player, I say, oh, play an E note. And they're like, okay, here, you know, I'm like, no, 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 up the neck. And they're like, I, I don't know. And, and so you should be able to find an E on every string. Um, and I'll show you, I'll show you a trick to help. Uh, I'll show you a, a, 
a trick to help you get good at this. Um, and then the, for acoustic guitar players, uh, touching my hair doesn't count, does it? Is that do you all have to take a drink now? Yeah, and so let so, so but oh, let me. The most important thing for acoustic players, I've said this many times, even in this last five days, I've said it, is getting down as many strumming grooves as possible. Okay, the right hand because so many guitar players, acoustic guitar players, you know, they like they do the same. Uh, it's like. every song it kind of sounds the same so you want to have some different grooves um and so i've got a series i just i like what lesson number eight am i on there um and uh let's see um youtube playlists um hey i'm live cool so let's see create a playlist i think is what i want um strumming and or grooving Okay, I'm going to put a link here. I've got, there's uh, 20 videos in here. And some of it's for electric guitar players and some of it's for um, acoustic guitar players, mostly acoustic guitar players. Here's the link. And that um, is a playlist where I have a lot of grooves. And so if you're an acoustic guitar player, that's the thing I really recommend kind of get getting. Um, someone said something the other day and I forget what it was. Was it on here? Oh, remote romance. Oh, nice. <laughs> romance for guitar, right? Uh, is that the, um, let's see. That's romance for guitar. That's actually a pretty easy piece, um, except for that one little. I had some workarounds for that for beginners. What was it? Something like that. Um, I could teach that one. It's public domain, so I don't have to worry about it being being copyrighted. But uh, um, you're already learning it, so I don't need to teach it. Pepper will teach everybody. <laughs> so Pepper, what time are you going to go on and teach everybody <laughs> how to play romance for guitar? Um, so let's see the, um, so like I said, learning the fretboard. Okay. So here's a trick you can do. You can take, uh, take every possible note, um, and sharpen flat. Um, so you would have a, a sharp, a, a sharp, B flat, B, I'm not going to do B sharp, C, C sharp, D flat, D. Um, D sharp, E flat, F, F sharp, G flat, G, G sharp, A flat. Shuffle them face down on the table, pull one up. It says A. Without using open strings, find an A on every string. And you can start at the bottom and work your way to the top or whatever. And it may take you a minute to do. You may have to go, okay, this is the E string. So E to F is a half step, G, A. There's A. And you'll go, okay, this is the A string. Well, I can't use the open, so I'll go to the 12th fret. Okay, there's A there. Okay, uh, D string, so D, E, F, G, A, there's A. You know, it may take you that long to get just one card. And then put it on the pile, pull up the next one, says C sharp. Okay, now you're like, oh, C sharp, really? You could just start with A, B, C, D, E, F, G. You could totally start with that. Because that's enough information to figure out everything else. Like if you know where G is, well, then you know where G sharp is because G sharp is just one fret above G. If you know where G is, you know where G flat is because it's one fret below. OK, so you don't necessarily have to do all of the iterations. But I like, you know, I did it just because I wanted to know. I, I wanted to be able to think of, think of them that fast. So, you know, you say B flat, you, go, you should be able to get to that speed. Um, and that way, if you know all the B flats on the fretboard, then and you know where the roots are on these, then you can play any one of these in B flat without even having to think. Um, so you know, like pentaton, the the A form. So I'm more likely to see that. And again, part of the reason I like the the um, cage method is because each shape has a whole myriad of licks that just go with it. 
um, you can start transcribing blues guitar players and go, oh, what what shape is he playing in? You know, is he playing on the? And if you hear that, he's probably not. You can't really wiggle. You can't really wiggle that top string like that. So you can kind of assume he's probably in the D form, no matter what key he's in. So you'll start to see those things. And I'm always a big advocate of you trying to create. Um, and that way you can you can create an exercise. You can do it in every fret, every position, try to modulate all this stuff. Um, and then you get rid of the problems you have in your hands. And then um, you, then you're also creating content. You're creating new ideas. You're you're sparking that creativity that's inside of all of us. I believe we all have creativity. Um, and what you're, the, the idea of learning this stuff is not so that you can play scales, but is, is so, that, so that you have a vehicle and a tool to use with your creativity. That's the whole point of learning scales. Okay, so we got some, uh, let's see. Oh, you almost missed it. Yeah, almost did. I'm almost done. Uh, let's see. Uh, <laughs> The bars on the seventh fret have me cruising. <laughs> practice, practice. Yeah, what else are we gonna do, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. Everybody's online. I, you know, I could change the time I do this, um, but so generally, I've been going thirty minutes. Well, I've never gone thirty minutes. <laughs> I did a live stream that was over two. What three hours one time? I think Pepper, you were there the entire. Kathy, were you there the entire three hours? Um, but I, uh, I will probably go, you know, I can go another 10 minutes or so. Um, and then I've got to get to work. Thank God. But, uh, just kind of keep pushing forward. Yesterday I was working, I had my flamenco out because, um, I was working on, I, I play guitar on the game Apex Legends. So if any of you are gamers, you might know Apex Legends. <laughs> yeah. Pepper, you were there. So there's a new character coming out that's going to have kind of a little Spanish flop, uh, vibe to it. So um, I was doing some Spanish guitar over uh, that. And um, so and then also doing a lot of electrics. I do a lot of electrics on Apex Legends. So, yeah. So, you know what Apex Legend is then, right? <laughs> so if you hear any guitars, it's me. <laughs> me here in my in my. Uh, in my lab making noises mostly, you know, let's say you, you, if you watch my video on cheap guitars, you saw the drone guitar and you saw the cluster guitar and both of those got used yesterday. Um, I can pull out the drone guitar because it's kind of fun. Uh, hold on. Don't go away. So the, so the drone guitar, Harrison, if you're still watching the drone guitar, I call it this. It's not anything official. It's just my name for it. Um, it's just a cheap squire, of which there are billions of them out there, uh, made in China, like another thing we know. And basically, I've got it tuned to three E strings. Now, I just happen to have three different gauges, like I have, I think, a, a 46, a 48, and a 50. <laughs> That's a pretty clean sound. Normally I would do a, a dirtier sound with that. But the other thing it allows me to do is these clusters. I don't know if you can hear that. You couldn't do that on a, a regular tuned guitar. So I love having fun with, with, you know, that's the reason I have so many cheap guitars is so I can have them tuned in so many different ways. But this is my cluster one. I haven't done a video on this. I did a, I'm sorry, this is not the cluster. This is the drone. I did a video on the cluster, but I haven't done a video on the drone one yet. Uh, let me get, let me get a patch up here with a little bit more gain. Uh, let's see. Kind of crazy, but, um, <clears throat> and you can hear what, it, I, I think you can hear pretty good on this. Um, ba -da -ba -da -ba. let's see. Sorry. I'm hunting, hunting for patches. So many patches. 
right, here we go, wide power. Okay, I'll do this one. <laughs> You can bend the crud out of the bottom spring too, which is fun. So anyway, <laughs> pretty crazy. Wow, got 7,000 steps in. <clears throat> oh, Rock, Rocksmith, is that a website, Diane? Um, using cage in the key of D, if we shift down all the pentatonic scales, two frets would be in the key of A or E. Yes, if you shift, I wouldn't call that down. I call that up, okay? That's down because the pitches are getting lower, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah but if you move it up yeah if you, all those scales of course i can't do it on this guitar because this is not the right guitar but yeah if you move it up two frets all of those are good in the key of e so if you want to if you want homework you could write out all of those scales i'm going to hold it up again you could copy all of these and if you just change all you have to change is the number here to if you change that in two to a four and this four to a six and that seven to a nine and this nine to a 10, I mean, 11. Now this 11, you could change to a 13, but then at that point you could actually go down, uh, you could change that to a one. So if you played that at the first fret, then that would be in the key of E and so on and so forth. But the other probably more important way to think about it is look at the circled notes I have on each one of these. Okay, do a screenshot, screen cap. Oh, I just moved my mouse. Like you're, you're not gonna see my mouse in your screenshot. <laughs> okay, now without my face. Yeah, I know. Okay, so you got it now. And uh, uh, where's my pick? There we go. So, um, yeah, you can totally. So if you move that this shape. That would be... that would be a key of E. So, yeah, so I just moved the one, the very first C form there. I moved it up two frets. Um, the C form, uh, and so you can see that there's the C form right there. And like I said, there's half of your notes in that scale. I'm tucking my pinky on. All right. How many times have I touched my face? I'm trying not to. My glasses don't count, so just so you know. All right, so let's see. Um, you were there. You were there quite a long time. <laughs> oh, did I? I told you to go out play outside. Yeah, yeah. Um, let's see. Um, yeah, I'm showing off. I know. That's, that's, hey, Show me, tell me a guitar player that's not a show off. And guitar players generally are very insecure. They're very insecure. Bass players are not insecure. Drummers are not insecure. They have their own foibles, but guitar players generally tend to be insecure. I know, like if you go to if I go to Guitar Center and I hear someone that plays something that I can't play or I've never tried or something, and I turn the corner, it's a 13-year-old kid, I'm like, oh no. <laughs> so um, and then, uh, yeah, squirrel, <laughs> exactly. Um, and then, um, but yeah, it's being, but being insecure, I think that in some ways is, is not necessarily a bad thing if you use it, if you use it for, you know, positive motivation. Um, I certainly spent a lot of my life practicing um, and, uh, you know, kind of sad and lonely and alone in a room practicing and going, I'll show them. <laughs> you know, when I was in junior high and high school, I'm like I'll show them when I'm a famous YouTube star. You know, I was even saying that back in the 70s. I'll show them when I'm a giant YouTube star. Hey, uh, how many subscribers do I have? Can't wait to get to 100. When I get to 100,000, I get a plaque. That's pretty darn cool, right? I'll actually, I, I have, I've played on lots of gold and platinum records. I've, I've played on Grammy winning records. I've played on Grammy nominated records. And for every one of those achievements, I could have some kind of plaque or some kind of thing to hang on my wall and uh, know that I don't, they wouldn't just send them to you. You have to buy those, by the way, you can't just go, Oh, they don't just set, show up. Those usually, you know, if those, when you see the gold records and things like that on people's walls, usually they pay for them unless they're the artists themselves. Um, okay. 68,000. I'm getting there. Um, yeah, I know. I know. It's a joke, Sean. <laughs> when, 
<laughs> when I was in high school, there was there were no computers, um, except we had to we did crazy. What was the programming we did? We were like uh, we did code the 10. Remember 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 100. You know, we had to code everything and everything went in order. So if you wanted to have the computer draw a picture of a canoe, <laughs> you had to program every stroke. <laughs> it was the most ridiculous. Yeah, COBOL. All right. You remember that, right, Gary? <laughs> that was high school. I remember that in high school. It was like, I'm like, what? When am I going to use this? So, um, that's a lot of that's a lot of gain. That's my kind of metal sound I like to use for some stuff. I've used that sound a lot on Apex Legends. So, um, I'm going to be doing some more work for it today. I'm not exactly sure what. Um, but I have, uh, that's good. Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah, you could, you, Pepper's got a separate uh, YouTube channel that actually has twice as many subscribers as I have just analyzing my psychosis, psychoses, right? <laughs> so she's actually, yeah, she's, she's actually making quite a, I, I'm surprised I don't get more subscribers because of her, but I think she scares them enough with all my psychoses that, uh, that nobody's really uh, gonna wanna watch me. So, um, all right, back to the rhythm sound. And then, um, okay, so let me just quickly review all the pentatonic shapes. I mean, all the the, uh, the cage shapes. Here's C, and here's the shape over that. Now that I've been talking about these, but it's just basically every one of those videos is just one lick Vi with, you know, envisioning that shape. Okay, the A form. And again, I play like this. Remember, we were talking about uh, uh, Let It Be. Let me play that in a second. Here's the one based on the G shape, the one we all know and love. D root here, D root here, D root here, B root here, B root here, B root here. So we have three major roots and three minor roots on that one. That's the only one of the five pentatonics that has three of each of the major and minor roots. Um, and then we get up here, and this one has three major, but only two minor. And it's based on the E form. And you can play it really pure with in, in technically ninth position with your fingers sticking to the frets. Uh, but you can also jump up and do the box thing. And then the last one is the D shape. And that's the one we did today. It has a little, a little uh, jog to the left. jog left you don't you'd land on the g which would be the fourth which isn't part of the scale but you can resolve to it so that's kind of a cool lick right there or down to the root okay um what was i gonna what was i gonna show you after that dang it i was talking about i can't remember now what was i gonna say <laughs> okay well you <laughs> You you might get credit for analyzing my <laughs> my my uh, videos, so we'll see. You sub to Pepper. <laughs> Diane just sub to Pepper because she wants to see the analysis of the analysis of a guitar player. Oh no, I'm inviting this now, aren't I? I totally am inviting. I even said on one of my videos to go ahead and, and like punk me or something. Uh, I'm a nut, Pepper. I had to I, I had to approve the term <laughs> the. You are a nut. <laughs> I had to prove that. That's just funny to me. I'm like, that's not naughty. Squirrel, squirrel. So, um, and you know, who knows? We might, you know, through through this, through all this over here, the uh, the thread and the comments, there might be a, a a love connection made somewhere in there. I don't know. You guys might you might like start meeting elsewhere. You know, once this is all over, you guys are gonna have a a gathering and meet and uh, talk about me and <laughs> at some coffee shop. So, okay. So I, um, like I said, I want to kind of, Oh, touch my face. I want to um, talk about the diatonic scales next. I think, I think that's the next place to go. I will give you some of those. Um, I, you know, maybe tomorrow I will just talk about the fact how they're all connected. Oh, I know what I was going to talk about. Sorry. Did you, did anybody remember what I was going to talk about? No, <laughs> drink. <laughs> uh, some of you have been here for the whole hour and you're like barely staying on your chair. 
um, was the was the solo to um, "Let It Be" by the Beatles. Uh, George Harrison uh, used Bach shapes, and he's you know, uh, there's two solos: one on the album version and the single version. And the single version is the one that sounds like sounds like he's kind of going through a, a Leslie cabinet, which is probably what he's doing. two strings of the a form shape the middle two notes the middle yeah two the middle two strings of the g shape and then the top two strings of the e shape and he's basically turned used all that to create a solo but it wasn't it didn't sound shapey it didn't sound scalier it's it was a legitimate landing on a lot of roots here So you don't want your solos to sound like exercises. You want your solos to sound like melodies. So all of these tools, all the scales I'm showing you, yes, they're they're the design is to get them under your fingers so you don't have to think about them. And then they just become a tool for you to sing or speak. OK. Um, Jesus, you alone by Highlands Worship. I don't I don't know that song. Uh, I might. I don't know. So. Anyway, okay, everybody, I'll see you tomorrow, 11 o'clock. We went an hour. Um, I, my plan is to go half an hour, but I'll, I generally, you know me, I go over. So um, the love boat. <laughs> oh, my gosh. You guys are crazy. I'm going to shut off the video, but I'll leave the, stream, the chat up for a little bit so you, we can uh, talk a little bit there, okay? God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.